Oh crap, I just kicked that camera trap. I don't want to do this. I'm gonna kill him. Okay. What's going on? My name is Keegan, uh, and today I'm gonna teach you keyframing and masking. Uh, this is some fairly simple ish stuff, but it is uh, like just fundamental with Premiere Pro. If you don't know keyframing, if you don't know, like it's just, you learn this stuff, your editing level just, poosh, you go, it just goes nuts. Um, yeah, it's fairly simple. I'm gonna show you how uh, you can use each of them, and then I'm gonna show you how you can use them together. Uh, and what you can kind of do with that, but there's so much creative freedom uh, unlocked once you have these guys just in your pocket, yeah, up your sleeve, just, yeah. Anyway, let's hop in, see what we can do. Okay, so, uh, this is complicated. I was, <laughs> I was filming, right, and I got halfway through this tutorial already and then my computer did this mad crash, like this footage, I filmed it. Whatever. And then you have this thing here that says, mask. What just happened? Oh my goodness. All right, we're live. Okay, so, we're jumping into Premiere Pro. Um, so we have this clip here straight from uh, Conscience, the music video that I did with my friend. You can actually check that out. Oh there or something. Keyframing is fairly simple. So click on your clip, go up to the effects control panel, which is up there if you don't see it, play around here. You have your options here, and next to these, there's this little stopwatch, and if you hover over that, it says toggle animation. So we're gonna go to scale, and we're gonna click that, and boom, you have a keyframe. You're like, whoa, you have a key, yeah, it's a keyframe. And you're like, that's cool, and it's a pretty cool looking keyframe. Now that keyframe, the value of that keyframe is 100 because your scale is 100 when you set it. So now let's move across to say about there-ish. And see this little button? We're gonna click that and boom, there's another keyframe. You have another keyframe. Now this, the value of this keyframe is also 100 because your scale was still at 100 when you set that. Now we are selected on this keyframe. If we move the playhead here, that blue dot goes away. Whereas if we come back, the blue dot comes on, which means we are editing the value of this keyframe. Um, so this scale, we can bump you up. Let's say, well, let's just take you to straight 200, what the heck. Now this, now, so now, the, va ugh, now the value of that keyframe is 200 and the value of this first keyframe is 100. You see where I'm going with this? So now we click play and in between it, the, the frames in between are told to go from 100 to 200 in that amount that in that amount of time between uh, So if we grab this keyframe and we pull you closer and then we grab this keyframe and pull you really close there's probably say 20 frames in there and In those 20 frames it has 20 frames to get from 100 to 200 so it goes like this a lot quicker if you put that right next to each other then it's like more or less you know, one to three frames kind of thing. If you zoom in, we can make it one frame. Um, let's grab that, make you like literally stick it right next to each other. So in one frame, it goes from 100 to 200. If we move it over here, say there's three frames, one, two, three, four, five, five frames, five frames to get to 200. So that's keyframing. Like it's, it's kind of simple. Now, if we want another keyframe, we can add another one. Let's say it's 150 and you just set that and it's already recording what you got. So now there's a new keyframe. So now you have three keyframes. And so it's gonna go up to 100, 200, and down to 150. Or you could go like this. You could go really quickly up to 200 and then slow fade to 150. And then it's gonna slowly zoom out to 150. All right? So that's keyframing. Now, most uh, effects will have keyframing on them. Uh, it's just, if it has that little stopwatch, then it has keyframe, right? So we can grab the position and that's going to be there. And then by here, we can make it go like that. And in between those two keyframes, it's going to move from this position to that position, right? You can do that with rotation. Set a rotation one, we'll have it at zero. And I want you to be at, yeah, let's go. Minus 180, whoop. Oh, times one. So you told it to get from this value to this value in this amount of time so it's 
it's not super complicated. It took me a second to get my head around it, but uh, as soon as I started playing around with it, it kind of clicked. All your effects are going to have the animation option on it too. So if we go into... What's something I haven't done before? Sphere eyes. That looks good. We'll check you on there. Uh, what, wait, what does it do? Oh, oh, that's cool. It creates a sphere. Okay, so let's grab that keyframe. Chuck you, that keyframe is valued zero. Then we go right to the end and we're gonna chuck you onto like 1000, I guess. And it's gonna look like that. So in between this, it's gonna make a sphere. Uh, my computer doesn't like uh, Premiere Pro and screen recording at the same time. It, it's a little slow, so you can buy me a new one. Thank you very much. Um, we could change that as well. We, we could make this guy there. We could make the value of this go up to... Get that selected. Let's go flipping... Yeah, 2,500. And then let's go over here and we'll make you go to 500. Why not? You know? It's gonna go... Zoop. Oh dear. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna render this out just for you. Okay. What does it look like? Boop. Boom. Fades down. Cool. Basic keyframe. Now, pro tip. Let's just chuck onto scale. We can set you to go from 100 and you to go to 200, right? So you watch that back and it, oh, come on. Thank you. So it's pretty harsh. It goes and it gets there, but it's pretty, uh, heavy. So what you can do is you can right click on the keyframe and click ease in, right click, ease out. And what that's going to do is it makes you go, it makes it a lot smoother transition. Now this doesn't work perfectly every time. So if you need to adjust it, you click down that little arrow there and you can go in and you can adjust the speed, uh, and value of how th quickly things will move by yourself. So now that's a ramp, zoop, uh, we can ramp it the other way. We can go like that. There's like, you can get pretty creative with this too. So now it's gonna go zoom. It's like, um, so that is useful. That took me a bit uh, to learn and to get my head around, but just play around with that. Um, yeah. So that's keyframing. There's a lot you can do with that. All right, now I'm going to jump back in the past to when I filmed masking before my computer shut down. So hopefully this all works right and the camera angle is a little different um, and hopefully the lighting and just, uh, hope, yeah, anyway. Masking, let's go. All right, let's just start that again. Okay, masking. <laughs> masking um, is fairly simple and most effects will have a mask. Actually, I think every effect has a masking option. Uh, you can do a lot with masking, so it's really good to understand it. Now, the simplest way is this opacity tab here. Under that, you have three masking options. So we're just gonna grab the free Bezier tour tool or just a pen tool. And I'm just gonna, let's just create a six point thing. Okay. And it creates a mask. So essentially it cuts out part of the video to only what you want to see. So say we wanted to create a really, really loose, rough, harsh looking mask around my friend here. Then we can just do that. Just lob that in. There we have a mask. Now in the mask settings here, you have four different options. Actually, technically five. There's an invert option. Click that invert. Uh, the regular mask option is it will cut everything else around the mask. So only what is in the mask is seen. If you invert it, basically anything that's inside the mask is not seen. Um, and so it just cuts. Uh, if we grab a second video layer, which I have, actually, let's just grab it from earlier in this clip. We'll just grab just the video for that because we need it. Now, under that, you can see the second video layer, because this is on video two, and that's on video one, so you have video layers, video three, two, one, you're only gonna see from a top-down view through that. So if there's something on the top, you're only gonna see, you gotta cut a hole in that to then see through, or just remove that completely to see the next video layer. 
So we're in video two. And now you have a hole in this video layer through there. Now if you click, go back into effect controls, click invert again. Now it's going to be the other way around. You just have this floating thing um, of the mask. Now if you want to make that mask bigger, you can go like that. Right. And then you can, you can do like a heart. Like you can just cut anything and just go nuts with this. Um, so you'll need masks for many different situations. You can use it creatively how you want. Uh, but there is so much that you can do. Now, if you take keyframing into masking, this is when things get really clever because things change, right? So you have these stop stopwatches on the side here again, right? And so we have this mask feather, which will feather out the mask. Okay. So if we want the feather at first to be really like you want a lot of feather, that's at 300. We could take it even more. Let's go to 500. Heck, why not? And then by the end of the clip, we want it really, really harsh. So you have it at zero. Now that's going to affect the, the parameters of the mask feather. Um, so if we just turn that off, let's take you to 50. Mask expansion. What it does is it expands or de -ex unexpands. De -ex makes your mask bigger or smaller, essentially like that. So if you want it big and then go down, like you can do that if you want. Uh, or you can change the mask path. Okay, now this is this is important that button does a lot so that's essentially uh selected where your mask is now and you move across there and then you want the mask to be over there and so now it adds a keyframe so now you can see that your mask is going to travel from this point to that point right now let's see from this point you don't want it just to move you want the shape to change as well so you're just going to add a thing there and you want this to go bigger and you want this to you know, move halfway through. I can't actually see off the screen, so it changed that to 50%, and we can actually see. So now I want that to cover half the screen by that point, okay? You move through the beginning, and then through that, it's going to adjust and move across until it reaches the point that you want it. So you can, you can, you can do so much with these masks. It's like, it's crazy. So let's get rid of this mask. We'll change you back to fit. If we jump in and grab a video effect, let's grab, uh, let's grab a, just a Gaussian blur from Blur and Sharp and chuck that on top, right? And we chuck this blur. Oh, one second, let me just get rid of that video layer. We chuck this blur and it's all the way up to 500, right? It's blurry. You can't see anything, right? And so you want that blur, but you don't want it over the whole thing. You just want it just kind of on the sides or to create some kind of dreamy look or something. So we create an ellipse mask and we're just going to stretch you out it's like that. That's good enough ish. Now that's blurry on the inside. We want on the outside, right? So we're just going to click inverted. Now it's blurry on the outside. Kind of looks cool. Like you're seeing through. I mean, maybe that's what people who need glasses say. I don't. Sorry. Anyway, but that's too harsh of a line. So let's grab that mask feather and we're just going to feather you up. Let's go 500. Let's go a lot of feather on that. And that's a little bit too much on the sides. So I want to make you bigger. So I could A, just pull you out and make you bigger, but I'm lazy. And there's this tool here for a reason called mask expansion. So we're just going to have you start out. Let's go like that. Now there's blur on the edges. Uh, another thing you can do in this is click repeat edge pixels. And it, sorry, I should have done that earlier. Uh, creates kind of a nicer, smoother blur. Um, cool. So now we can change like everything. So for example, the mask expansion is, is, is there. With keyframing, you can change everything. You can change the mask shape. You can change the shape of the blur. You can shape, change, so much. So in the beginning, let's say you we, we want it to be too far out so that you don't get any blur. So let's go like way out to the point where there is no blur, which is going to be 420. Typical. That was an accident. Okay. So we're going to click the mask expansion. And by the time we get to the end of the video, we want this to cover everything. So let's pull that mask expansion down to where it covers everything. So now it looks like this. Okay, now let's say we want this blurriness to start even more blurry 
And then by the time we get to the end, let's take that blurriness only a bit blurry. We'll take that to, yeah, 50? 50. Now let's see what that looks like. That's kind of really weird. <laughs> it it looks strange, but like this is just masking and keyframes, right? You can do a lot with it. That actually kind of looks really cool. Um, and then, you know, if you want to change your mask path, if you want to change the shape, if you want to change the feather, actually, let's do it. Heck, why not? We're here now. Mask feather, let's go from 81. So that by the time it gets to the rest of these keyframes, we're gonna have you at a very, very feathered out thing. So as it comes in, there's more feather. Right, it's, you can do absolutely everything and anything. Like there's, there's so much creative freedom and it unlocks so many doors. Once I understood uh, keyframing and masks, it changed everything. You can do some really, really cool transitions that I'll make tutorials about later probably. Uh, you can do just so much with masking. So I just encourage you to just pop in Premiere Pro, take some clips and go crazy. Learn it. Do some crazy stuff and then tell me, tag me in it, show me and, and teach me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's kind of it. That's the tutorial. So I hope this has been good. I hope it's been clear and you've learned stuff. And yeah, but hopefully this has been enough for you to get your head around this side of Premiere Pro. Uh, yeah, so leave a like, hit the subscribe button. You know that whole process and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.